Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, August 14th, 2013. We begin with a story from the world of biotechnology. In the past, we have talked a lot about advances in genetic and protein engineering, where scientists take our understanding of biology and bend it to their will in a more precise manner. Researchers at the Rice University have begun taking this approach with viruses. Particularly, they created a new way of designing viruses to be used as gene therapy vectors. A particular family of viruses called adeno-associated viruses, or AAVs, are used because they can infect human cells but don't often cause disease. Still, for every gene therapy application, the virus's protein shell usually needs to be modified. One approach is to make thousands of mutant viruses and hope that one mutant is more effective at delivering the genetic payload. Another approach is to precisely and rationally mutate one version of the virus, but that can also have a low success rate. What these researchers did was a middle ground. Instead of mutating viral proteins, they attempted to mix and match entire pieces of different species of AAVs. The virus parts were surprisingly resilient to being forced into chimeras, and the researchers have already created one such hybrid in the lab from two quite distantly related AAV species. But this is just the first step. They plan on making a library of these chimeric viruses, and hope that this can become a basis for designing vectors, allowing other groups to create gene therapies that target specific tissues, or even specific parts of the brain. Next is news from the world of nanotechnology. Nanotech is all of the rage these days, but we rarely ever hear about it being put into everyday items. One of the reasons is, nanostructures usually have a fairly complex and or expensive manufacturing process. But a group at Oregon State University has developed a solution for this problem, as it applies to silicon nanostructures. These nanostructures have a wide range of potential applications, from medical sensors to energy storage and much, much more. However, the process for making them is expensive and only creates a tiny amount, making it undesirable for mass production. Their solution is deceptively simple. Table salt. Yes, humble sodium chloride was used as a component in the production of advanced nanomaterials and may open the door for a new industry. The group's simplified production method involves combining the salt, magnesium, and a cheap source of silicon. This mixture is heated up to 801 centigrade. At this critical point, the nanostructures would usually be damaged, but the salt becomes molten, absorbing the heat. With such a relatively simple and cheap process, they hope that their method can be used to mass-produce nanosilicon to be used in future technologies. Our final story is a quick update from the world of biology. When it comes to ecology and discussing soil quality and fertility, it's usually the plants, fungi, and microbes that get all the love. However, a recent study led by the University of Oxford has found that large animals can be incredibly important to the distribution of certain nutrients. Particularly, they analyzed a mass extinction that happened about 12,000 years ago, focusing on its effects in the Amazon. This event killed off a wide variety of megafauna, including giant sloths and armadillos, and resulted in a 98% reduction in the dispersal of phosphorus. And it makes sense if you think about it. Nutrients may be concentrated in a fertile area like a forest near a river, but large animals can generally travel large distances, and as they poop and die, they disperse nutrients that wouldn't otherwise be dispersed. From this data, they were able to generate a computer model that can predict the effects a large animal has on the surrounding soil fertility, and what effects the extinction of that animal may have in the future. This may highlight the importance of preserving our modern-day megafauna such as elephants. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. Viruses can be kind of boring to look at, so somewhat in reverence to our first story, what chimera would you create? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments below.